With that said, uh, I would invite you to the bench in here and pop the Son of Devil. They already flashed, so I'm just going to rewind the time and uh, show you how I did it. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. My previous videos, I talked about these. Uh, 4CH and 4CH Pro Son of R3 Edition. Those are new on the market and I've talked about uh, good and bad things in that video. You can take a look. Now, you probably know what's gonna happen next. I'm going to flash them with Tasmod and show you how to use it with no dread. Because, well, you probably want to make it yours as well. Unfortunately, there is no DIY, which means you have to revert back to the old traditional soldering method. That's the bad news, so make sure your soldering iron is hot and ready for action. The good news is you can use Tasmotizer. I've talked about Tasmotizer in this video, which is awesome for making a backups and flashing new Tasmota on boxes like this. And that's what I'm going to use because it's a one-click solution. The entire process should take about 10 minutes and you're gonna have both of them flashed and ready for action. And then we're going to jump into Node-RED, so I'll show you how to implement the same solutions that Ewelink app has, so you'll be able to integrate your Smart Assistant, use inching, interlocking, and a couple of other functions. So, let's get started. I'm actually going to solder in a female 5-pin header, just in case I want to use extra pins in the future. So the best way to do it is just to hold it with a finger and just secure it with the two quick joints and then do the proper soldering uh, job on the board. You can see me doing that on a Son of 4CH and doing exactly uh, the same way on the Son of CH Pro R3. So I just stick the header in, secure it with the quick joints and uh, make sure they are nicely soldered because later on you're going to use them with uh, cables so that's important. Now that I have it done it's time to start flashing it. The procedure is super simple. First connect the cables and pay attention to RX and TX connected to programmer because they are in reverse. So that's important. Obviously you want to pay attention to 3.3 voltage and the ground and do not connect the boards to mains because it's not needed. Once you've got it connected, hold the S1 button, that's GPR00, and then power through the device by disconnecting the cable. The LED should not flash so that means it's in a flashing mode and you are ready to open the Tasmotizer. Now, I'm using Tasmotizer first to back up original firmware and this is where I encountered the first issue. Now, during the backup, the backup would be created but the Tasmotizer wasn't going anywhere with uh, procedure, so it was hanging on the backup uh, firmware stage, as you can see in here on the video. To bypass it, all I had to do is just abort it because the backup was created and then power through the device into flash mode again, open the Tasmotizer and start the procedure of flashing again without actually selecting a backup. So uncheck this, select the release and you're ready to flash Tasmota on it. It's only going to take a couple of moments and the Tasmota is going to be ready. Once this is ready, before you do anything else, just power cycle the device without holding the button and send the configuration first. It's going to make it so much easier to find the device on the network. So on the list of modules, you can actually use the R2, which is a 4CH and 4CH uh, Pro settings, and they will work just fine. They're listed just at the buff. Now once you've got that, you can configure your Wi-Fi and MQTT. Now going forward, I'm going to swap prefix and topic around. This is something I do for my convenience, you don't have to do it. But if you're going to use my files, remember those two values are swapped. I'm using Thing Desktop app to actually find this 4CH Pro and locate the IP. Now that I have it, all I have to do is just uh, test it out. And as you can see, pressing the buttons toggling, toggles the release on the son of itself and I'm ready. To get the basic controls, uh, you have to get your topics right, and the easiest way to do it is just to navigate to your Tasmota device and go to console. It's gonna give you all the topics in here and how you should have it formatted. So if you want the information uh, or subscribe to correct channels, you can always use that log to help yourself out. Now we're gonna start with the basic controls. If you want a control for different relays like I did in, 
in here, you'll notice that you have to configure your MQTT uh, to a specific topic. Now these topics are being power one, two, three, and four. Obviously they correspond for each channel on your Sonoff 4CH. Now if you're using 4CH Pro, it doesn't matter. They are going to be set up in the same way. Now because it's a MQTT with the small it takes a couple of values. So you can use true or false, which I would recommend you to do. You can use zero once and you can use on and off actions. Now when you switch that, um, the relay or toggle the relay, you'll notice that I got a feedback in here. This feedback is coming from those two nodes. Now this result is going to show you that I'm going to get a result of where I just happened as a JSON. And in this case, I switch the power on on this, uh, power on on the relay one. But if I'm gonna toggle it on the second one, I'm only gonna have a one output because in this uh, MQTT, I'm only power uh, monitoring power one, so, so relay one. It's also worth noticing that this uh, structure, this uh, common structure will submit a string. So you can see it's just the on, it's not a JSON formatted. So this is the difference in receiving feedback from your actions. Now, because uh, if you want to program it in, or control it programmatically, this is how you would set up. You would send the values to uh, respective um, MQTT nodes with different topics. Obviously, topics can be submitted uh, via message topic as well. It's down to you. Now. If you want to get that information on a dashboard, we can use the switches. And I have a dashboard in here, as you can see, I have our switches in here, so you can toggle uh, relays on and off. And as I do that, uh, the information is gonna be populated in my dbook thanks to those updates nodes in here. So I would know what's going on. And that's a very simple dashboard uh, to turn the device on and on for each channel. There's nothing really exciting here. Now we're going to jump into more advanced features that are available in the EvoLink. Uh, so I'm going to talk about inching and interlocking. Uh, inching, I've resolved that earlier, and there's a specific write-up that I'm going to link it for you. And thanks to a single node solution, you can just uh, pop the node in and you'll have a different inching settings for different uh, channels. So let's take a look back at uh, how I resolve this. Uh, so in here, you'll notice that there is a code that will handle it. If you want to read that um, article, you'll, exp you'll explain how it works. But the important bit is the setup and the closing part. Now, the setup on a deployment will set this channel uh, timeout R1 to 10 seconds. And if you want to change that, you change that from the close because that's going to be uh, read on the redeployment. So you just uh, modify the timeout in seconds and you can do it for each channel. Just know that each channel has a different designation because you have to store these in a different um, flow variable. So otherwise uh, channels won't respect each other's timings. So that's how you do it. And how you connect it is basically you link your relay to um, switch to the function node for inching, and then you pass that to a uh, MQTT node that is formatted into a correct topic. So I have four of them, um, one is corresponding for each uh, relay in uh, Sonoff S4CH. Now, and let's take a look at it in action. So I have a uh, inching in here. So if I'm gonna press a uh, relay one, two, and then four and three, and I went wait 10 seconds, they're gonna start disconnecting one after another. As you can see, the action just started and it's gonna replicate exactly the same way because every single one was set to a 10 seconds timeout and that's how it worked. Now interlocking means that you can actually press one button uh, like relay one and it's gonna disable relay two, three and four. If you press relay three, it'll disable one, two and four. So let's uh, take a look and see it in action. So if I press on relay one, it disabled all of them. If I press relay four, it will disable all of them but relay four. Now, how it works in details is, it was slightly complicated to figure out, but I managed to do it. Um, creating four different payloads that they're gonna be sent sequentially. So for example, in here, I'm going to send the payload to relay one, sending, saying to the relay, hey relay, just turn it on. And that's how I specify which relay it is. And then there is a relay two to uh, disable, relay three to disable, relay four to disable. Now I'm using a, a clever trick, which means you can actually send your payloads in sequence as a series of messages. 
and I have two outputs as you can see at the bottom so basically uh, I'm asking this function to send first R1, R2, R3 and 4 so check the values, send them one by one and then in message 2 in my second output it will send information to three other buttons to show uh, that the buttons are being disabled. We have to make sure that the buttons don't have a topic specified and they have a pass-through in here to avoid the loops. So I handle that as well because if I'm going to send the feedback which is specified on the loop back, uh, then that's not going to be um, influencing uh, relay changes, otherwise you'll end up with a, a loop that never ends. So that's how, resolved, how I resolve interlock. Okay, next step, you probably want to integrate a Google Home and um, Amazon Alexa devices into your setup. And this is something I also covered before. As you can see in this write-up, Alexa in uh, Node-RED, uh, you can see how to integrate that thanks to the Alexa skill, uh, which is a Node-RED Contrib Alexa Home skill. So this is something that you have to install and then you, all you have to do is just to name the device accordingly. So if you create four different virtual devices, you can name them Relay 1, 2, 3 and 4. And then we'll, you will be able to use your command like turn Relay 1, turn Relay 2, etc. Now the same goes for uh, Google Assistant. For Google Assistant I'm using Nora. And you'll have to install the Nora first. and it's exactly the same in principle, so you have to create four different devices. You're probably going to go with a switch and uh, you can then just issue the commands and turn on the switch once, switch to or whatever you name it. You can name it lamp, you know, bedroom lamp, etc. depending on what you're going to hook up to this setup. The only thing that you have to bear in mind that uh, I'm just going to apply the topic uh, for each uh, virtual device within that device and that's going to be passed to MQTT and I'm doing exactly the same in here with uh, uh, Amazon Echo where I apply the topic to each node so I can just simply pass it over to an empty MQTT and out node. Lastly if you want to introduce the timer I've did a timer back in then so you can have this timer and uh, you can actually apply it multiple times but you will have to change a bit of code inside which is responsible for um, storing different timers ID so there is a detailed description on how to do it as well so if you want to have a timer for each channel you can do it as well so that's pretty much it in terms of a mm, node red really in the description of this video, you're going to find a link to article that will explain everything in detail for you as well if this video was slightly too fast. Now, I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to use these yet. One of the ideas was maybe if I'm going to get a second or third 3D printer, I would use a board like this to control the power delivery. Uh, as for now, well, time will tell. If you follow me for some time, you know how it works. I do not have a posting schedule and everything I post, I probably go through social media first as not every article has a video. You probably know how YouTube works, I don't have to teach you that, but if you want to get updates whenever I post something, it's best to follow me on social media of your choice and you'll get instantly notified. So, thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.